Hello and welcome to the Simple Steps Personal Finance Podcast. Bringing personal finance to you step by step. This is episode 14. Thanks for joining me. If you want help with your personal finances, book a free call with me through the website. That's sspf.co.uk slash book. And I'll call you for a chat. If I can help you and you want to proceed, I can assure you that you'll benefit much more than I cost you. It's a free call, so an inquiry costs you nothing and could gain you a lot. Before I start this week's episode, let me remind you that it's Valentine's Day next month. Now, if you're planning a romantic date, don't forget to allocate money to it in your monthly spending plan. After all, all months are not the same. This week, we're going to look at the practicalities of paying off debt. It's that time of the year where so many people have struggled to get to the end of January with any money left in the account. That early November payday and that expensive Christmas and New Year add up to a long and poor January. For many, there'll be overdraft debt or credit card debt that has been inflicted in order to make it through to payday. Now, nobody's judging here. I want to help you with your plight. Now, if you're following my simple steps approach, we're talking about simple step three here. Pay off debts, starting with smallest first. You should be living off a spending plan and you'd also have a thousand pounds in a savings account as a rainy day fund. Now, I'm not sure there are many people out there who would keep money in one account to the side and run up a debt on the other. So it may be that some of you have dipped into your thousand pounds to loan yourself the money you need to get to the end of the month. Now, I'm fine with that. In fact, scratch one up for the simple steps, folks, as no bank is charging you interest when you loan yourself the money. So that's a partial win in my book. Your job over the next couple of months will be to get that amount back to £1,000 and be more accurate with your spending plan to reduce the likelihood of overspending in the future. And what about those people who don't have the simple steps framework in full operation yet? Those who have run up some debts and are now faced with the challenge of cleaning the slate. Well, here's how I suggest approaching it. Firstly, the hard part is that for February, you have to spend less than you are paid. You have to. Without some surplus cash being left over, you can't think about paying off debts. And if you don't pay them, two things are happening. You're being charged interest, and the amount you will need to find next time to clear the debt just got larger. So I believe the phrase here is nipping it in the bud. We need to free up some cash to put towards these debts. My first tip would be to see if we can liquidate any money from unwanted Christmas gifts. That might provide a quick influx of funds for us. Otherwise, it's essential that we look to spend as little as necessary in February. Now, the good thing about February is that it's shorter than January. And when you take it next to the five or six week long period since your last payday was received, then this one arriving in exactly four weeks will feel wonderful. Just 28 days of reigning in your spending, and you should have leftover money at the end of the month. Now that brings us to the big question. If I have an overdraft and some credit card debts, which do I pay off first? And it's a good question. Now anyone mathematically inclined is immediately going to start talking about paying off the highest interest rate first. That you will save valuable pounds by doing it this way. Now, I probably disagree with that. I say probably because there's unlikely to be overlap here with my suggested approach. You heard my simple step three earlier. Pay off debts, starting with the smallest. And that's my method. It's known as the snowball method. But let me paint you an example before we go into too much detail about the name. Let's say there are three debts. Debt one is a £250 overdraft that you ran up in order to get to the end of January. Debt two is a £100 credit card that has been used to buy food this past week. Debt three is a £2,000 credit card that was on a 0% balance transfer that has just expired, but you want to pay it off this year and you can't find another 0% deal that'll accept you. Now let's say too that there are interest rates of 10% on the overdraft, 15% on the small £100 credit card, and 20% on the big £2,000 credit card. Now, mathematicians' logic would have you paying off the big 
£2,000 debt. First, as that's got a 20% interest rate. Then the small £100 credit card, because that's at 15 And then finally the overdraft, as that's only at 10%. Now for the sake of this example, let's say you could free up £300 a month to put towards these debts. We have a total of £2,350 of debt. With no interest involved, we know it's going to take eight months to clear this debt. With interest, it'll probably be another month longer. Before I weigh up using the snowball method or not, it's essential to remember here that credit cards have minimum repayment amounts, usually 3% of the balance or £5 for the small balances. Now that means our big £2,000 credit card takes £60 to keep it from complaining before we even start. It'll be a £5 payment for the smaller credit card too. And for good measure, it would be sensible to throw £5 a month at the overdraft. So let's go the, the mathematical route first, the interest rate route. The highest interest rate is 20% and that's on the big £2,000 card. We pay £5 minimum to the small card and £5 to the overdraft too. So out of our £300 that we have freed up, we have £290 to pay towards the big credit card in February. The debt is now lower on that card. It's not 1,710 like you'd hope, but 1,736 because interest has been added. We do the same for March, April, May, June, July, August, and make a final payment of £73 in September. Now the £100 card has reduced to just 72 in that time because of those £5 payments being a little more than the interest that's been charged. We have enough left over to pay that off too in September. The overdraft has reduced a little from 250 to 228 in all that time, so we put the remaining £155 or so towards that. So that's the end of September. In October, we clear the last of the overdraft with a £75 payment. Now let's look at the headlines for that then, rather than all that detail. We'd have paid a total of £125 over that time in interest. The first debt to be fully paid off was the big credit card, and that took from February to September. By October, the other two debts were gone, and we were now fully out of debt. Now on paper, that sounds pretty good, right? Debt's cleared, the lowest amount of interest possibly paid, a planned approach, it's mathematically tight, but how would it feel personally? It'd be a long year for me, paying off money every month with no real reward. From spring to autumn, I'm staring at my bank account being in overdraft every month, carrying three debts for the majority of the year. I'm looking pretty glum here. This isn't turning out to be the 2015 I'd hoped for taking my finances by the scruff of the neck and showing them that I'm in control of them, not them in control of me? Well, at least I can be happy I kept the mathematicians happy with their interest rates. Let's look at the snowball method instead. Paying off debts, smallest first, then next smallest, then next smallest. How would that play out? First month, I'd have to pay the minimum on the big card, so that's £60 straight away. Then my minimum on the other card, that's another £5. So that leaves me with £235 out of the £300 to start clearing debts. But wait, my my smallest debt is that £100 card, I can just pay that straight off. Right, done. So now I've actually got £140 left. £100 cleared the small card, £60 for the minimum on the big card, that leaves me £140 out of £300, right? What's my next smallest debt? The overdraft. So let's put that on there. By the end of February, we've cleared one card and half the overdraft. Next month, we've got 240 to play with again. After the minimum on the big card, which is now our only credit card, has been met. And the overdraft is only £111 after a month of interest has been added. So let's clear that down now. Out of our 240, we've now got 129 left. Let's make an extra payment to the big credit card then. By the end of March, we're down to one debt. April comes, £300 available. 
just one debt remaining, only one place to put it. And so it goes for May, June, July, August and September too. The final payment in October is £92. So again, let's look at the headlines rather than the details. The snowball actually costs us £142 in interest. Now that's 17 more than that interest rate method we talked about earlier. But we cleared our first debt in February, our second debt in March, and cleared the last one at the same time in October. Emotionally though, the year was totally different. The early wins in the first two months did lots of positive things for us. They showed that we could beat the debt, that it wouldn't linger forever. The early wins meant that our finances were tidier, we had no persistent overdraft, no stress of carrying three debts, and they meant that we could focus on beating one debt for the majority of the year, not try to fight three together all the time. From April to October, we were knocking chunks off that debt. £300 at a time, no mess, no fuss, just hacking away at it, not worrying about minimum payments or carrying overdrafts. And that's why the snowball method wins out here. It's not about maths, it's about human behaviour, human emotions. And let me ask you a question. Would you stick with the interest rate method, honestly? No visible progress for nine months, living in your overdraft all that time. What are the chances the rest of your finances wouldn't start to creak at the seams? That you'd still sacrifice to scrape together your £300 a month debt payments? I don't think you'd get great odds for that. I think most people might succumb to taking on more debts, perhaps taking out a personal loan to try to consolidate this down somehow, and then run up the credit card again because the lesson wasn't learned. The reward of paying off the debt was missing. So the old behaviour reared its head again. Same old behaviour, new credit card debt, just added to the personal loan. Happy 2015. But try the snowball method. Get a couple of quick wins under your belt. Prove that the debt is beatable, and you're a force to be reckoned with. By October you'd feel two stone lighter when that final payment is made. You've achieved it. You stuck to the plan. You conquered your debt. Oh, and it costs you £17 more in interest than it might have done. But I'll take that on a total debt of 2350 Happy debt-free 2015. Happy debt-free with money in the bank 2016. Happy debt-free with money in the bank for a deposit on a place 2017. Happy, you get the picture. The message that is most important through all of this is that you don't get anywhere if you don't sacrifice. In our examples, you have to live on £300 less than you bring in each month. Now that's money that could be spent. Your problem's brushed under the carpet, and yet you don't. You use it to clean up the mess instead. That's the important thing. Having some money left over each month. The grey area, as I called it back in episode 7. If you've got sizable debts and you're looking to pay them off, sometimes you can't free up the amount you'd like to each month to pay the debts off as fast as you'd like to. I understand that, I I really do. This is where the next level of sacrifice comes in. How far are you willing to dig to pay this thing off? Would you be willing to sell some stuff on eBay? Open up a, a stall at a car boot sale? Advertise a load of stuff on Gumtree? Be honest. Do a little stock take. Look around at your possessions. Do you ever get the feeling that sometimes they possess you? If you do, then it's time for revenge. Be merciless. Anything you haven't used since last Christmas, get it up for sale. Anything that is out of date, sitting in a drawer somewhere, it's worthless to you. Like an old mobile phone or that remote control off your last TV. They're currently worth nothing to you. Zero. Nada. Niente. But they're worth something to someone else. There are websites that you can sell old phones to. Putting a a remote control up for sale on Amazon Marketplace or on a a free listing day on eBay won't cost you anything. And if someone has that same old TV, they might just want a replacement remote. What have you got to lose? In fact, I've done both those things in the last year. I got a total of £45 for old Samsung TV remotes. I used an all-in-one and they'd, they'd sat still wrapped up in the original packaging, so I got top dollar on eBay. 
and I got £20 for an old phone that I found in the back of the wardrobe. Now, I could have not bothered, but looking at £65 minus small postage costs, I think I was right to make the effort. Had I needed to clear debts off, that £65 might have been a welcome shot in the arm when my will was starting to waver in the summer months. Let me tell you, for motivation purposes, I've sold old books, old computer parts, an unused camera, a tablet that I'd stopped using, and a sat-nav that I no longer need, all in the last six months. Total earned was around £450, and more than that, I feel a bit lighter. I no longer have to squeeze that shelf back when shut in the cupboard door. Some people are out there using those items for what they were designed for. It's a win-win. So the practicalities of paying off debt comes in two forms. Sacrifice, then snowballing. Use your head to understand why carrying debt is destructive to you over time. Then snowball the debt away so you can get quick positive feedback for your efforts. Focus on the goal ahead. Focus that money on the smallest debt and focus on freeing up as much spare cash as you can. Because once it's over, the better, stronger, capable and richer you will be looking at a bright future. Out of the despair of January and the longest money month of the money year to the relief and victory of paying off those debts. Now that's how I want 2015 to be for you. Next time I want to look at mortgages. How do they work? What do they cost? What types are there? How do I get one? I want to cover the basics of the largest expense you're likely to have in your financial life. And the one that can bring you the most reward. A home. In the meantime though, check out my blog at sspf.co.uk slash blog for more financial common sense. Don't forget to spread the word. Financial peace of mind is here to stay. Simple Steps and my personal finance coaching are here to help. If you're finding this approach useful but are unsure on how to act, drop me a line and let's see how personal finance coaching can help you. After all, what could be better than having personal guidance tailored to your circumstances? Book your free consultation at sspf.co.uk slash book. That's B-O-O-K. Thanks for listening. That's it for episode 14. For more information, check out the website for show notes and transcripts for each episode. This podcast is copyrighted, Simple Steps, Personal Finance Limited, and can be shared freely. The SSPF podcast is available as direct download on Android, RSS, iTunes, Stitcher, Mixcloud, YouTube, Vimeo, and more. We're here however you want us. If you like what you're hearing, please leave a review so others know to listen in too. Thanks as always to Partners in Rhyme for the music used throughout this episode. See you next time.